<clears throat> hey. It's really sunny here in um, Indiana today, Kokomo, Indiana today. And uh, it's like 40 degrees. I took a walk. And, uh, man, I need the sun. I, pe people like me need the sun. We, um, the sun affects my mood, and it affects how I think when I get up in the morning. The sun is shining. You know, uh, life is good. <laughs> if it's not shining, then, uh, man, geez, just my mood reflects the, the weather. It's terrible. It shouldn't, um, it shouldn't affect me like that, and I wish it didn't, and it's something I need to work on. So... I'm also having coffee for the first time in like a month and a half, two months. So, I'm preparing myself for a major <laughs> shit. <laughs> so here's some questions. Uh, what made you write I Want to Die? Um, during that time, uh, when I wrote that song, I, that's how I felt. I just wanted to die. Um, I didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. I said this, that, uh, I Want to Die is from the Lost and Losing It album, and that was based on... A, um, the ending of my marriage and um, I just didn't I didn't see any hope and that's how I felt I didn't see any way out of my situation I couldn't see all the good things that were still happening in my life and um, I look back on it now and I, hopefully I've learned from that uh, but at the time I was just um, that's how I felt I, it was hopeless and nothing was working nothing was working and a lot of people um, write me and say they're going through relationship tr trouble or they're so-and-so broke up with them and how did I get through it and and they relate to the album because they're they're feeling that way too and um, honestly man you just have to let time uh, take its course you know run it run its course because it, the only thing you can do while this is happening to you while you, if, you, if you fall for someone hard and I, I, I tend to do that I'm the kind of person that I, I, if I once I fall in love with you man I just I, I, get, I get smashed by you because I just uh, I fall so deep into you and then um, then I I, I, uh, I get crushed so I, I have a defense mechanism where I probably become a dickhead about it. I don't know man just if you're like me and you fall hard for people and when you when you when you go through a breakup you, you can't move on from it um, dude all you can do is focus on you all you can do is focus on you make yourself better and people obviously this is the this is the advice that everybody gives but it's so true uh, it's not gonna. It's not gonna make you feel better. It might a little bit, but you're still gonna feel pain. You're still gonna have to suffer through the through this. But make make focus on making yourself a better person. You know, start exercising. Start reading more. Just start doing things that um, expand your mind and challenge you. That's the truth. That's that, that stuff works, man. I, that's all you can do. I, you know, I don't know what to say about that. I'm gonna skip some of these questions because some of these questions just I just don't want to answer. Um, my, my, my middle name is <laughs> touring again, uh, house shows, man, uh, obviously with the coronavirus, um, the band's not touring right now. I can't wait to tour again. And the people I'm going to go out with, I think are excited about touring again also. Uh, man, sorry. I think I have this fucking, no, oh, this is just a weird, Never mind. Sorry. I see myself and it's really weird. Um, so, um. And where was I? Touring again? Yeah. So, um, yeah, house shows. I was, I was, uh, just talking to someone the other night about doing house shows. I would love to do house shows. Man, uh, th those are so much fun. They're so personal. And right now would be a good time to do it, you know, because you can't really put like three, five hundred people in a, in a room right now. But you need 25 people, you know, maybe 40 in a living room, just some little amps. Two weeks, West Coast. Or not West Coast, East Coast, Midwest, somewhere close. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you know, of course, love the tour again. Just, just right now, we can't. Uh, pr preferred medium for creating art to let shit out. I would much rather, um, I'd much rather create with pencils and uh, clay. I'd much rather design. My favorite part about Harley Poe, honestly, is um, making the T-shirts and the stickers and um, the album covers. Because writing the songs, um, if I'm writing, if I'm writing songs, it's because I'm most likely depressed, or I'm, I'm going through a hard time in my life, and that's that usually brings me to write because I need to let it out. 
uh, some way or another. And the best way for me to do it is put my feelings, my anger, my insecurities all on paper and then grab a tune and put it to that melody. And then there, there are songs and I feel I feel better because it gets it helps me get my shit out. But if I'm doing that, I'm going through a hard time, so I don't prefer to do Harley Poe, really. I'd much rather just draw and sculpt and make crazy monsters and shit like that. I, I prefer to do that so much more. That's how I, I'd rather um, be creative because it, it's it's more peaceful to me and it's just more fun for me. And the, doing the band thing isn't necessarily peaceful, you know? It's, it's me letting out my shit. So that's my preferred me medium, I guess, or, or you know... Um, Pencils and markers and clay and whatever. Um, thought process interpretation for Meech at the Swamp. We'll just skip that. I'll come back, back to that one. My thoughts on artistic intent versus public perception. Uh, well, my intent, like I just said, is to release my issues. I don't write these songs for anybody but me. Uh, so the way the public perceives these songs, um, I have no control over that. And I'm not trying to control that. I don't, I don't care. You know, if you look at this song, if you hear a song and you, you're taking it not the not the way I I wrote it to be taken, uh, that's your issue. That's your issue. It's not my issue. And I, I'm not trying to be cold about it. Like I don't give a shit. It's just um, this is my art. And I'm not a teacher. I'm not a politician. I'm not a pastor. I'm not out trying to change our country. I'm not out trying to teach the young. Or um, my congregation, how to be moral. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just making art. And um, I've been asked, do you, do you hold any responsibility for the things that you say? And um, honestly, man, if you don't like it, if, if it hurts your feelings or bothers you or it, it, you think it's um, subversive or whatever, it's just not good for society, I would suggest that you don't listen to it, that you ignore it. And, I, and it's maybe focus your time and your energy on things that you love and that you can support. But quick, especially in this world, man, in this day and age, we, um, everybody's throwing stones. Everybody's trying to burn everybody else at the stake. Everyone's trying to call out everybody or cross everybody out. You know, give me a fucking break. All it is is censorship. Are we going to start burning books? I, it, it doesn't it doesn't it's not right it's like telling it's telling it's a filmmaker or a writer or anybody else that they can't express themselves that they they must be a murderer because people are getting murdered in their stories and that's just crazy that's crazy don't fucking censor me don't hold me to any kind of standard as far as uh what i'm allowed to write and what i'm allowed to release because i'm, I'm going to go where i go i'm going to go where my darkness goes i'm going to go where my creative juices are flowing and if, if I say something that bothers you, man, I would just suggest that you just say, fuck that dude and get and go somewhere else. Don't support me. Don't support it. So the public perception, man, uh, I hope you guys can understand what I'm trying to say. I'm, you know, I think as a citizen and as a, as a human being, I do my best to be kind and uh, to be, even to be moral. You know, I try to do the right thing. But when it comes to my music, that's my outlet. That's my that's my moment to vent. And if you, you stumble across it and it hurts you or just makes you mad, grow up. Fuck off. Whatever. Uh, my thoughts. Uh, I, just, I just read that one. We just went over that. Uh, release a new songbook or get Joe a guitar book. Um, not right now. Uh, I'm just too, doing too many other things right now. And if tour happens soon, uh, I, yeah. Um, I will, I will, I just want to, I want to add, I want to update it and put like 20 more songs on it before I release it again. So I'm not in a hurry. So, um, figure that shit out, man. Figure that shit out. Um, next album to return to Satan sex and no regrets, wretched, filthy, ugly, or more like lost and losing and have a great life. Well, I think wretched, filthy, ugly and Satan sex and no regrets are very different from each other. The, the instruments, the people that played on them, they're, they're not the same album. And so um, a few years later, when Lost and Losing and, and Have a Great Life come out, they're, they're different beasts, too. I think all four are different beasts. Um, the big differences, I think I wrote, they're both about relationships, all four of them about relationships. But um, maybe the earlier stuff's a little more lighthearted, a little more just vulgar and uh, violent and horror-themed. And I, I have some new songs that I'd like to get back to. Um, I like to get back to that style, you know, taking it easy. And I'd like to get out of the whole woe is me. I'm, I, I got broken up with. My relationships suck. 
Um, I like to get out of that. So, I mean, those, there's the, the difference between then and now, I think, uh, the, rela the relationship thing. And Jamie Johnson's vocals changed up the music quite a bit, I think. And, um, but man, I, I, I love her vocals with my voice, so I don't plan to, to stop asking her to play on albums right now. Um, but hopefully the next album is just different than all four of those. Hopefully it continues to change and it continues just to grow or to, to um, fall apart, you know, and go somewhere else. I don't know what's going to happen next. I have ideas of right now the, um, the home recordings I'm doing are 10 songs. Um, I got a ukulele over the um, uh, last summer and um, I like to... I utilize this ukulele with it with this new release, and uh, it's got some old songs on. It's got some new songs, and there's some relationship issues in there, and um, some darkness and whatever. It's just it's gonna go where it's gonna go. I don't I don't know where it's gonna go. It just wherever it goes. <laughs> oh man, I don't have enough time. I'm gonna maybe keep going and split this up into two videos. Uh, inspiration for suckers. I was working at Books a Million. I was vacuuming the floor. And this melody came to my head, and this is one of those songs that just came, you know, de boom, just just in one night. And um, the suckers, and I thought, you know, oh yeah, it's a vampire. They're suckers, but this 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 sucker, she's a vampire. But I'll t kind of make it like it's a, a blowjob, you know. Um, you know, the song's really not. It's not really not about fellatio. It's about um, a dude that kind of just gets what he deserves. You know, he's out there just trying to you know, hook up, doesn't really care who he hurt, about who he hurts, and uh, this, this other person's out there doing the same thing, and but, but she just happens to be a vampire, so in the end of the day, he, he's, she's a sucker, and he's the sucker, hey, you fell for this shit, and it's kind of a woman empowerment song, really, and, and if, if you don't get that, it's one of those things, man, I can't, I can't control that, you know, if you look at that song and get something else from it, whatever, you, it's, you can interpret art the way you want to interpret art. But uh, I know what I was intending to say with that song. So there you go. I hope you get it. I hope you get it. At the end of the day, he gets drained, you know. <laughs> How and that and that honestly, the the idea came from a um, uh, I think this movie was called Once Bitten with Jim Carrey. It was a vampire movie, and um, the vampire who seduces him, I think she bite him, uh, in, 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 in like near his, you know. His penis, like on his leg. Yeah, that big vein on your... What, what's that big vein called? I'm dumb. I'm just not very uh, intelligent. Sorry, I don't know I don't know what uh, how to use words. <clears throat> uh, how did you feel about a song on Scooby-Doo? What did the kids think about it? My kids weren't born when that song came out. It was a Calibretto song called High Five. It was on Scooby-Doo. My nephew was watching Scooby-Doo. He said, hey, Uncle Joe's song is on this. Uh, it was really exciting at the time. I don't know if I've ever seen royalties for it, <laughs> so so it was cool, but nothing happened of it. I, I love Scooby Doo, so I like Scooby Doo, so that was cool. That was cool that it was on Scooby Doo. So whatever. Uh, inspiration for Herschel goes to heaven. Uh, Herschel, Gordon, and Lewis. All three of those were illustrations I did, and I was making up the story as I was drawing each one. And after I drew everything, I, I put words to it, and I put rhymes to it. And then later on, I turned them all into songs. And it was a series, Herschel Gordon Lewis, um, named after the godfather of gore, Herschel Gordon Lewis. That's why all three stories are very gory and um, just weird and strange, because his, his stories, his movies were weird and strange. He was a director, he's released director movies, in the, he's released movies in the last few years, but he um, he did a, a lot of 1960s. He's the godfather of gore. You check out his movies if you don't know who he is. Um, a lot of people would probably say they're very they're terrible movies. But uh, I just wanted to pay tribute to him. So I, I made these stories up, these gory little stories, and I turned them into Harley Poe songs. And that and her, yeah, I, already, I think I've said enough about that. <clears throat> Music people wouldn't expect me to like. I don't know. Maybe oldies. I like a lot of um, like oldies, uh, like uh, doo wop bands and uh, '60s rock bands with girl singers, things like that. I like a lot of old music. I like a lot of music. I, I listen to anything. I'm I'm not picky, man. I I, I tend to tend to respect. You know, if I don't really prefer the genre or style of music, I, I'll give it a listen and I'll at least respect it for what it is. So. Uh, fascination with the taboo, uh, st transvestism, cannibalism, gruesomeness. Uh, like I said, probably the movies I grew up watching, and um, it was just stuff I wasn't allowed to watch, and so of course I was so interested in it. And I just 
it became part of me, I guess, you know. Um, that's it. Uh, thanks again for listening, guys, and for watching these videos. And I'm trying to answer every question. I'm sorry if they're, they're taking too long for you to do. I just start rambling and shit.